Hello everybody, uh, thank you for joining us for another exciting video. Um, I got a new mic so hopefully the sound quality is a little bit better than on the previous video. And today we're going to be talking about the bar game. And we're not talking about the alcoholic kind of a way, we're talking about the one when you have data. One thing that we wanted to note, I'm going to try something new this time and I'm going to build the slide um, as I go to it. I'm just going to speed it up so you don't have to watch throughout the whole thing, but I will try to put tips on the bottom of the screen and then we'll see if you guys like it. Um, if you do, let us know and we'll try to do it for other ones as well. And today we're going to start by talking about when should you use the bar chart. So first thing is the fact that there are two types of uh, bar charts, um, what people usually refer to as bar charts. Uh, first is actually a column chart and that's the chart that goes um, and displays information uh, vertically. And then we actually have the actual bar chart and that's the one that displays it horizontally. So how do you decide if you should use the bar chart or the column chart? Well, the logic is simple. If your information makes more sense to display horizontally, for example, you're measuring uh, distance or time or performance of one category over another, perhaps it's better to display information left to right, left being the lowest and right being the highest. For a column chart, it's rather similar, but this time maybe you're tracking changes over time or maybe you're comparing category by category, but this time your data is more of a measurement of rainfall or growth uh, rates, but this time it just makes more sense um, for user to see the data displayed vertically. So next we're going to jump into Excel and look at some data and see how can we actually build uh, charts for it. So first we have sales over time and second set we have comparing different countries and average life expectancy in those countries for males. When we're looking at the data that compares multiple categories and some of the names are rather long, it's much better to use actual bar chart instead of using the column chart. So we're going to go ahead and create a um, bar chart. One thing that I want to note is that although we created it in Excel, we're just going to copy um, and paste it into a new slide in PowerPoint. And then I'm just going to quickly format it. First thing that you want to do is definitely give chart a good description. So in this case, it would be average life expectancy of males in countries. Um, the next is going to be to display the data. And right now, um, everything is kind of small. Everything is the same color. And what we're going to do is increase the size of this. We're going to bump up the size of the font. We're going to remove the clutter in the background and we're going to remove labels on the bottom. And you might ask, well, now that we remove bot labels on the bottom, how can we actually display the values? And the better way to display the values will be to display it on the actual bars. So what we're going to do is click on, on the bar. We're going to go to uh, series options. We're going to decrease the gap width. Uh, between so we have more room to work with then we're going to add data labels so you're going to right click on the bar go to add data labels uh, once you have data labels if you click on the label options you can go to inside um, label position and here you can either position it center inside end inside end a lot of times makes more sense um, now data is inside um, you can increase the size of it as well uh, i'd highly recommend changing the color of the font to be something that has far more contrast and then once you have that you can make it bold you can increase the size now we have the data labels um, then you kind of have to look at the purpose of your slide and depending on what you're trying to show for example you're trying to show that sierra leone is the dead last in life expectancy for males, um, absolutely no pun intended. To show that, you could use color. Um, you can definitely make it stand out far more than um, other um, items on the list. Um, 
if you select all of the bars uh, you can change the color of all of them but if you click one more time on that specific value that you're trying to modify you can actually change the color of that particular item so in that case uh, whenever people get to the slide their first thing that they're, they're gonna draw their eyes to is Sierra Leone and they're gonna see the small value I know it's not sorted, I know it's not alphabetical, but from the point of visualization, it's much easier to see um, what are you trying to accomplish. So the next thing, we're going to work on a column chart. We're going to quickly create some data for us. So for creation of our column chart, we're going to be using some of our historical data. Um, it's over time, we have sales, we have months. So we're going to go ahead and create a column chart. Uh, once we have the column chart, we're going to go ahead and just copy paste it into our uh, PowerPoint. And the first thing we're going to do is um, make sure that we give ourselves a of room to work with this. So now that we have our chart, it's pretty basic. Um, and let's try to find ways to spice it up. So first of all, you don't need these um, grid lines. Um, they are distracting and they don't really add any value. Um, then we're going to go ahead and add our bars some volume. So we're going to go to series options and we're going to control the gap width. And by doing that, you can add or subtract some width out of them. Next thing that we can do is um, give some size to our descriptions on the bottom. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually control the angle at which they're displayed. So the larger the font, um, then they're gonna start rotating automatically, but with custom angle, you can put um, a value to control it. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go ahead and return this to normal because in all honesty, it doesn't need to be um, so rotated. So we're gonna go put it back to zero. We're gonna make it smaller so it fits. Um, next thing we're going to do is um, add some colors and the idea is that once again when you're using charts there should be some purpose of why you're displaying the data so if you have certain knowledge that you're trying to show so for example if you want to show that July um, was a pretty um, terrible month for your company um, you can mark it red you can mark June as green um, Another thing that you can do to kind of diminish um, some of the attention to the rest of the months is if you go into the fill and you do a solid color, um, one unfortunate thing is that they're going to change colors um, to the basic um, white. But what you can do is, if you'd like to, you can control the transparency. And unfortunately, you cannot use the Format Painter for it. So for that you would remember the transparency that you used and the color option so 54% for all of them so the next thing um, that I wanted to show is more of a how to use this information on the slide not just to display the chart but also kind of add some information about the chart um, so I did get rid of the labels on the side and I didn't listen to Joseph's perfect um, example of why you should increase the number of undos in PowerPoint. So I couldn't actually return to start from beginning. So therefore I'm kind of skipping forward and not showing how I got rid of it. But once again, it's a pretty basic, you just select it and delete it. So once you have the information in front of you, um, you're happy with your chart and you're trying to think of how can you place it on your slide? Um, and how can you make sure that uh, not only visually makes sense, but you also provide some um, wording around it. Um, if you are going to be using um, kind of like a leading paragraph, which you should, and maybe a point that people should take away on the bottom, um, you really could technically get rid of the chart name to give yourself some more room. Um, another thing you could do is you can individually adjust these labels. Um, so if you click on one, you can bold it, and you can make it a little bit bigger, and then you can just format painter the other important value for yourself. 
and now that you have the chart that you're happy with um, you can insert a shape I personally prefer shapes um, because it's easier to work with I'm not gonna give it any fill I'm gonna give it slight outline um, on the bottom I'm going to do the same thing might label it as a key takeaway It's just going to be more of a, a statement of what the graph represents. And obviously this is just for example purposes. And on the bottom we're going to have um, more of a key takeaway um, of what should be the outcome of looking at this bar chart. This would be concluding our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys were able to learn something new. Um, and if not, maybe just reinforce some other knowledge that you had. Um, sorry for distracting steam pop-ups that I had in the corner. I'll try not to have it happen again. And uh, please subscribe, follow, um, upvote Reddit posts. And I hope to see you guys in the future. And if you have any tips, suggestions, or um, thoughts on what video we should do next um, let us know in comments and we'll try to accommodate it um, take care safe flights and safe travels